Hello. Uh, okay, there we go. Ming, hi, it's Martin and Nick. And today we're going to look at a property in Hale Lane. And with all of that in mind, let's get into it. So I'll bring the thing up. I'm going to share my screen and we'll go through condition assessment first. So uh, the there's a few things to be aware of with this property. So we'll talk about that leasehold freehold stuff. So anyway, right, it's a modern property. It's built 15, 16 years ago. It's in. It's uh, I see they've obfuscated the uh, the address or the property number, but anyway, fine. And we can see it's empty. So I assume this was let or whatever, but you know, upon investigation, we'll find out what's going on. Anyway, it's in pretty good condition overall. Uh, floor via laminate flooring and not too overlooked in the back. The double glazing looks fine. Economy bathroom carpet needs it's cleaning. The the bathroom looks fine. Again, very economy. It doesn't have mixers. It's just an economy house and the carpet was a bit scaggy looking. Uh, carpet needs a good clean, possibly a little threadbare, maybe. I don't know. We're going to see more detail in a minute when we look at the, the video. And with that in mind, let's look at the video. So here we go. I think it's reasonably high resolution, which is helpful. Um, right, looks like a fairly modern fuse box. Yes, it is. Got the RCDs. Now, I think that's still good for, for letting. And that bathroom. Now, one thing I'm not really clear about. It looks OK. I, what I was concerned about was whether that was paint flecking little bits of paint on the floor, but I don't think it is. I think it's fine. As in, if it was paint on the floor, that means there's damp walls. If there's damp walls, then there's a damp problem. If there's damp, but there isn't. This is a modern house. This would it would be incredibly unlikely if it had damp. OK, and here we are. Double glazing looks absolutely fine. It's got some kind of thermostatic control on the radiators, which is good. Some cables dragging around the place. It's a little bit, a little bit of condensation by the bot bottom of the window, but that's understandable. You get it around there, and um, so that kind of black marking is possibly a bit of mold, but it's a non-issue. It just needs cleaning, basically. This property just needs a deep clean. And we've got a mixer, kind of economy gas, gas, that's good. And we've got the boiler here, not a particularly modern boiler, but probably fine. And double glazing looks fine. Grass looks reasonable. Nice little backyard. And this room looks fine. Yeah, that all looks good. Everything's dry. It's just a essentially this is just a regular economy new build. Very little to say. The brick quality is decent. And the backyard could do with a bit of a jet washing. The fascia looks OK from what I can see. That being the roof fascia. Oh, that's interesting. So you've got access here through the garden. Not great with privacy, I've got to say, or security, but it's adequate. Uh, it's interesting how you have the old build beside it with like much higher ceilings. And again, this is like a modern thing. It's just it's an economy house. And up the stairs we go. Carpet needs a good clean. Little bit, the underlay on the carpet at the top of the stairs has gone a bit. That's a good sized hatch. And presumably with that hatch, there's a proper loft ladder from what I can imagine. 
Carpets look OK, so they're not threadbare. That's good. You could probably get away with just giving that place a deep clean with a carpet clean. You can see some cracking at the bottom of the uh, window. That's just expansion contraction type stuff. And you've got this, this which is fairly typical, this boxing, and that's where you've got the stairs coming up and they've boxed it off. Uh, it's still a third bedroom though, which is good. This all looks OK. Um, I don't think this has ever been decorated from whence it was built. Yeah. And basically on the photos on the last sale, it looks the same. So mm. when it was built, it didn't have. Yeah, I think if one owned this property, I think one might just give it a really well, obviously deep clean and possibly a paint red redecoration. You know, you've got some of these like not very neutral surfaces in the wall there. That's not great, but it's not to my taste, but I think other people would probably be happy with it. And they've helpfully left the window <coughs> slightly open to let a little air through. That's good. Yeah, it's just one of these very basic economy houses, but it does the fundamentals well, like it's dry, it's warm. It's got enough space for for a family to have their own bedrooms. Got a little ventilation thing on the ceiling. And uh, I've got Joe the builder. Bear with me. I'm just going to say hello to him whilst we. Uh, hi, Joe. Um, I, I'm just I'm just doing a property assessment. I'll be like finished in about ten minutes or so. So can I call you back then? All right. Thank you. OK, goodbye. That can was Joe back? Ming, that was Joe, our builder. Um, uh, if... Can you back a little bit of the video? It had like a crack on the wall. Yeah, I saw that as well. So let's have a look. And here we are. It's just, I, it's not a huge concern. Basically, the window is not, like... Not this one, the next one. Yeah, it's so there's a little bit of con but just to say this is because it's a bathroom and you get extra condensation at the corner of a window and it's made the paint sort of fleck a little bit. This I don't think this is especially serious. I think it's yeah, so this isn't a really serious issue. It's just annoying. So it's corner of the property and it's you often get this. We've got this. The house we live in is a new build and it's got the same kind of cracking and stuff, but it's a minor crack, so I'm not concerned about this. I don't think it's an issue. Put it this way, if this was a massive subsidence crack, then there'd be like a really big problem. There'd be guarantees being invoked and everything because a new build will have a 10 year um, guarantee on the property. So if there was a serious subsidence crack or something like that, it would have been picked up years ago. So I'm not too concerned about that. And there we are, all looking very nice. So you've got the damp proof course here, the dark grey bricks. Quite a pleasant street setting. And uh, yeah, quite a, it's not a busy road, but I wouldn't say it was a quiet road either. But at least you've got parking outside. Now, actually, there's an interesting little thing. You see here, you've got a dip. You've got this little thing here in the in the pavement. You should never park on one of them because you can get a ticket. Basically, that's meant to be clear. So whoever owns that blue car, they're liable for a ticket. Just saying. All right. So there it is. It's a perfectly tidy little nice house. Now let's get into the the pictures. Just see what they look like. Tidy. Car's got a flat tire. Oh dear. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> who that is. Anyway, you've got parking rear, parking at the front and the rear, which is good as well. All right. And uh, let's just do that. And we'll just quickly go through it. Street scene. Oh yeah. And the laminate flooring. I did say it was economy. <laughs> there it is. Is it worth replacing? Ah, uh, maybe. 
And there we have, oh, it's nice. <coughs> Fine. So 11 hail lane. Very nice. OK, let's get into the other stuff, the demographics and all of that goodness. So what I'm going to do is go full screen and here we go. Well, it's very central to Manchester and that's well, relatively speaking, Martin will talk about this in a minute. And here we are here. So it's one of these new builds. I assume it's. Uh, which one is it? I don't know. But anyway, I'm not too concerned about exactly where it is. Um, what I want to look at is the crime and the crime is relatively low. It's relatively close to a railway, but I think it's far enough away so that you don't have any sounds, uh, noise from it, which is good. And in terms in respect to demographics, it's fine. It's just your kind of classic English middle middle class area. It's got uh, lots of parkland and uh, green nearby, which is a benefit. And the capital growth is reasonably solid. So I just want to double check and make sure that this is the correct postcode area, because if it's not, that wouldn't help. It's M350GT and it is uh, M350. Let me just do this. Sorry. Got to get these things right. Now you're going to see how the system works. So M35, 0DN. I thought it wasn't right. I thought it was a bit OK. Here we go. All right. Same kind of patch, but just up. All right. So anyway, very low crime. Yeah. Uh, Nick, the property is on the other side of the street, but only. Yeah. Oh, fine. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. the point is it's very low crime around here, so this whole patch is good. And uh, in terms of the exact location in respect to the railway, we're going to talk about that in a second. All right. Now the next question is about the to the capital growth and overall it so very it went it rose a lot, 116% inflation adjusted on the way up. Now, just to explain how this all works, markets work in cycles. We've had, uh, we're in the ninth cycle, property cycle since 1845, and we're in the final boom phase. And so when, uh, when I look at this data, I'm looking at the last boom phase. What happened then? And the answer was the markets in this area grew dramatically. And then, uh, and then uh, they crashed quite heavily, in fact. So it was a little bit overbought in the last property cycle. And from 2008 to date, it's 2% under the high water mark from 2008 in real inflation adjusted terms. So in other words, the markets come back very well. And it's now one of the strongest markets in the country, this area. So if I go and look quickly at the postcode district, which was M35, we can see Let's have a look at capital growth and M35. We can see for this postcode district, it's one of the strongest for growth in the country at the moment. But it was also one of the, the hardest hit in the country when it crashed. And previously, it was one of the strongest. So what does this mean? Well, I, if you're buying this property, buy it now, don't buy it in three years time <laughs> because it's very likely to see a lot of capital growth between here and there. So if I go M35, broadly speaking in four years time, I predict it's going to grow another 20% roughly, I would say, especially this little patch. So 20% plus you adjust for inflation, that's another 20%. So let's say total growth, circa 40%, and therefore, it means that this property will probably go up to 230, 235, 240-ish, I would say, by the peak of the next, this current cycle. And in respect to sales and rental demand, let's have a look. So this is something I've built over the weekend. And yeah, it's a very strong rental demand. So um, the... The, the way I would read this is that if it's a decent property, it'll rent quickly. It'll rent in under a month. And sales demand, a little bit on the slower side, but in my experience with good properties, 
they go really quickly. So what this means is it's marginally less crazy than your typical uh, Manchester market, but it's still quite strong. Um, so anyway, over to you, Martin. OK, here it go. So first I will speak about the location. <clears throat> I know that we try also to book a viewing for number three. And the asking price for this is 180, for this 184. Uh, this one a little bit has larger garden, as you can see, compared to number. So I guess that's why it's, it have like 5K more asking mm -hmm. price. And it, you can see it have a parking here. The bins are <clears throat> here. So basically you have private parking behind and you have private parking. You have a parking in the front. Based on the location, really close to mm, trainways. Is that train. the trainway? Oh, I see. That's the station just there. Got it. Yeah, OK, yeah. great. Yeah. And oh, that's it's super good. good. That's a yeah. Yeah. wow. Yeah, uh, uh, you have two gas stations really close 24 hour markets. You have yeah, and you got two, a pub two. nearby and, uh, and yeah, you have, that's an exceptional location. Yeah, and you have two uh, large supermarkets. So basically the location is like you have also Morrison here. You have a lot of green space basically uh, back in the <coughs> really that close as well. Is so rentable. Yeah, and you also have a bus stop. So yeah, basically, fly. yeah, it, it's really nice, nice location, good property. Um, it's 2005 built, 69 meters square, and uh, it's APCC. So basically, you don't need to worry anything about this property mm. like next 20 years. Um, yeah, so um, that's Gosh, it. That's really very strong. Like on all the key metrics, the fact that it's just so close to stuff, I didn't realize it was that close. Yeah, it's close to everything. Like, and also to much there is to arrive in city mm. center. Uh, I think the only it, issue with this property is that it is twenty nine mil. Um, oh, six, but usually tight. all the new, yeah, usually all the new house are like this. Like that. they don't make it really large, but they make it. Uh, <clears throat> they make a good floor plan, so basically you can fit everything. Yeah. What you need. I guess also though the footprint's big enough so that you could put a conservatory at the back if you wanted to, which is yeah, good. Like uh, it's but got a big enough garden and everything. Yeah, this property really have a huge garden. So basically, if you make up three meters, just the garden here is almost nine meters, eight and a half. Mm -hmm. So if you put like three meters, you will have three and a half. You will at least have five meters again. So yeah, yeah, you will have huge garden again. So all right. Uh, so I remember number three. For example, it's smaller. If you add the extension, you will not have space for really mm -hmm. or garden. But yeah. that's good property. We'll try to book a viewing as well for this. We're waiting confirmation. And yeah, I think it's really, really nice property. Going to compare yeah, lots of green space and all that. Uh, this okay, is the property we, yeah, uh, with what we wanted to book a viewing, but we're waiting confirmation. As you can see, it's 180. This is 295, 194. To 10, 180. Uh, I'm so when you think about comparable properties that have been sold, what what are they going to go for? Yeah, because this property is also adver it was advertised in September, but I guess mm -hmm. transaction fallout. I don't know why, but we can find out. Uh, I think the asking price is correct asking price, but I think it will sell for 195. Mm. But the problem is then, then the yield will not be moved uh, because I think this property will rent for 800 minimum, but even it can rent for more. Let's say that it will rent for 800, but it will rent for more. And um, if you go, if you for for 195, just saying, mm -hmm. uh, the yield will be for that night, and then it not works. Yeah, it's a bit thin on yield, isn't it? Yeah, but it's really new. Can you, you know, just go through the rental comparables. Let's have a look. Yeah, and uh, rent, and then we'll go newest listed. So, and it, by the uh, way, Ming, as you're probably aware, this is this is this, right plus where we have yeah. it's like a pro system, so we get access to a lot of really good data. Uh, I think 800 just because uh, it's not really, uh, but you can see like new house, like 875. Uh, I think it will, uh, but you have this in 2020, 750. So that's why yeah, it's a but, bit you know I think I think 800 definitely and possibly 825. Uh, I think it I think 
uh, if I, we ask Jamie, he will say 850 because he he knows that location is prime and because he's calculating ages. All right, yes, so let's can. just be a little optimistic here and say 850. So how does it work at 850? Well, on 180, let's say 182. If mm -hmm. we take it, so then it gave you 5.3. So that's yeah. nice. And um, because it's a new house, usually on new house, everything more than five yields is working really well. Yeah. Well, OK, so let's do a final assessment. Uh, I think we can try a little bit above asking price. Like, well, definitely, uh, we'll, we'll definitely go above ask. So the ask is how much uh, at the moment? Uh, at the moment, uh, 184, 950. Mm -hmm. but and I how much uh, do you think it's going to sell for? 195, but... I think so too. I think it's definitely 195 a job. Yeah, but we can try to see, because as you can see, it was in September, 180 was asking, and uh, something happened. I guess the transaction fell out and yeah, yeah it could have, so yeah there's been some issue you you probably find that the property was sold and then the sale fell through but it's a bit of a weird one I need to talk to the agent so that the plan so if we do final wrap up uh Martin yeah so final wrap up uh, I can go with 187 190 just to see how is the situation just, but uh, I don't know yeah, so but if you, I will, finish, if you turn off share screen, yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, All right. but I will not go more than 195 just because the yield will not work. All but right. the location is really, really, really nice, and you will yeah, it's great. rent it. It's like really, really great. It's, like it's really lovely, nice. and also if you like walking and all that stuff, it's got it's got lots of amenities nearby, and I like it. I I like it a whole lot. I think it's a really nice little property. Um, yeah, I think you know, tight, kind of tight on size, but it's got three beds and they're usable, so that's the main thing. Yeah, I think it will rent really fast, and I think yeah, 850 will rent it out easily. Mm. Uh, okay. Just because the market is really hot in renting as well, not only in selling. So, mm. so, so therefore, so the question is, um, uh, Ming, how much do you want to offer? So we're saying we're saying we think it'll go up to 195. Yeah. This is always an assumption, by the way. I never really know until I make the phone call, chat up, talk to the agent, and just kind of get my bearings with them. And then I know. And and, and one of the other metrics is how many viewings, how many offers, and you know from that I can I can work it out. So the way it goes is, you tell us what you what you're prepared to offer up to. I scope out the situation. I'll give you a report, tell you what, what's going on. You tell me, and then and then we go from there. And then, you know, if all good, I make the offer. So, uh, and hopefully it'll be an offer that's going to work. All right, yeah. great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.